the root of the problem. Start rooting for you, bud. Yeah. Ah. Uh, let's root around this subject. Oh but there's a little finger carrot. I do not fertilize my root vegetables like I fertilize my tomatoes. That is not <laughs> safe for work. Wow, could we like out nerd ourselves anymore? Okay. I'll pull this one. That was carrot. That's Fer- like a, that's like you like a diffusing a bomb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Welcome back to the Helpful Gardeners podcast. We have a big reveal today, Colin. I, I, so you, you wouldn't even this. let me look. You wouldn't even let me look no. in the bag. No, I thought this was more fun because I went to the grocery store. And if you saw last episode, we were talking about uh, the towering giant. So like peppers, tomatoes, corn, and how to grow them, how to take care of them. And so this week we're talking about root vegetables. Going underground. We're going underground. Getting to um, the root of the problem. Start- Rooting for you, but yeah, yeah. Uh, let's root around this subject. Oh my gosh! Well, I mean, obviously the positive potato. Potatoes that, are underground. I think. Oh, sorry, I misunderstood. I thought that's all we oh. would. Oh, I was French. <laughs> <laughs> the positive potato becomes a weapon. Was, okay, you ready? Good. Big drum roll for okay. the root vegetables. Wow! That is. Wow, that is pretty. <laughs> you know, uh, that's one of my favorite things about vegetables. Yeah. I know this is totally off piss. It has nothing to do with the seeds. One of my favorite things is the aesthetic. Yeah. Like I, I love, I love the color. Like the, there's no such thing as clashing colors in nature. No, it's beautiful. Right? Look at those bright red radishes mm-hmm. and the carrots. Now, yeah. if you wore red and orange, bright red and orange together, people would be like, oh, do you own a mirror? Like, <laughs> but it works so yeah. well that it's I mean, vibrant and healthy. There's so many textures here too, yeah. right? And and um, so we've got like um, we've got the beet, we've got uh, some carrots. I thought you were going to lay down a beet. Uh, no. <laughs> Settle down, Doctor Dre. <laughs> we got um, the parsnip. Love parsnip. You, you taught me about parsnip earlier this week. Uh, we've got some beautiful. I just love radishes. I, they are so. Good. They're so beautiful. My mom always grew grew them when we were growing up, and it was always one of my favorite do, things. Do you find them hot? Yeah, it's weird. It's kind of like um, like arugula. It's like that little bit of spice. It's but peppery. It, yeah, right? it's peppery. It's yeah. like peppery hot. It's yeah. not hot, but there's a ting. Yeah, my yeah. mom would always do this thing where she would put salt in her hand and then she would just like dip it. You know, the little red little. When, when we, I know it's not a root vegetable, but <laughs> when we were kids, one of uh, the best snacks, my dad had a huge rhubarb patch. Yeah. And mom would uh, come out with her garden scissors. And she'd cut a stalk and then she'd cut the top off it. And we would have a little cup, a little plastic cup with sugar. Yeah. And you would just dip the rhubarb and scrunch it oh, in the sugar. That sounds so good. I've been meaning yeah. to try that ever since you told me. I've been meaning to try it. So good. Okay. Such an easy snack. Here's one, though, that I'd never seen before. I was never exposed to it. I want to know if you know what it is. Daikon. You know? Yep. Look at how big this yeah, thing is. Yeah, and they are so... like. It's, so the top of the plant is here. Yeah, and those leaves have been trimmed off too. Yeah. Don't forget. So like it was under the ground yeah. this far. Yeah, and look how clean it is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they do a good job. Daikon is so store. good. <laughs> yeah, it really is. It's uh, you, you've never had it. Never had it. It's uh, it's like watery and juicy, almost like a cucumber, but it's got the firmness and uh, the crunch of um, like a kohlrabi. Ooh. Oh, something so so good. Oh, and I do like that. Shout out to Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> That's so bad. hiding back here. You're just gonna not mention Jenny. Okay, no problem. We'll just, just put that there. <laughs> you know, I want I want you to share something that you told me yesterday about the beet. Oh, uh, the amount of sugar in them. Yes, I had no idea the yeah. sugar content of beets. Yeah, they have uh, more sugar than fruits. Great hack for roasted vegetables. Yeah. So you chop them up, put beet in it. Uh, you can get golden beets, uh, regular beets, whatever you want. Doesn't matter. Uh, just make sure you have a beetroot. So I do uh, beets, uh, sweet potato, potato, parsnip, and carrot. And then okay. onion and garlic uh, go in as well. But then when they're in the roasting pan, um, I do uh, three uh, tablespoons of olive oil and one heaped tablespoon of brown sugar. Oh. And I mix it together, and then the brown sugar caramelizes, but it pulls out the natural sugars. The sugar content in it, same with uh, same with parsnip. Parsnip has a sweetness to it, yep. not even close to the beet. Um, what is it? The beet's like twenty eight grams of sugar or something yep. ridiculous. Like yep. it is, it is potent, but yeah. it's 
uh, very fibrous. It has a ton, a ton of good things. I, I have beet every day. It was really fun to go to the grocery store and and look at all of the things that grow underground because like we're used to seeing this, right? Yep. But I was Googling, what does this look like in plant form? <laughs> you know, I mean, it was really cool to see how everything sort of goes together. And you remember a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about, you know, some of the common varieties that you'll find at the grocery store, but from growing from seed, you get a really rare opportunity to grow some really neat varieties. 100%, yep. So in carrots, I found like different colored carrots. And like purple carrots, this is called deep purple. It's one of those coated seeds that we talked about okay, last yeah. week. Um, and then I found like a bunch of different kind of colored carrots. So like yellow carrots, like the traditional orange carrots, but it's like, you can get so fun with it. One of my favorite ways to do carrots, total hack. Uh, a number of seed companies do them. I can't remember off the top of my head, so I'm not going to uh, name a company. Yeah. Uh, but I will say, have you ever seen uh, the seed tape? Aha, uh -huh. Yes. There okay, you. so yeah, we have one in the radish. What is seed tape? So uh, basically the seeds, uh, radish seeds and carrot seeds and whatnot are tiny. Oh, yeah. And when you're putting them in and they start sprouting, a lot of times uh, you've put more than uh, one in the area. Mm. Well, the seed tape eliminates that and they're already spaced. Yeah. So you run the seed tape for however much room you've got. Say, say you've got two foot by two foot. Mm -hmm. You do two foot, and then you make sure you've got that correct gap, and then they're spaced properly already, and you're not messing around with the seeds, and you plant it at the depth, cover it up, and away you go. Oh, I love that, because it kind of serves multiple purposes. You have this really easy thing you just lay down, yep. and it already kind of does the separating for you, but then you don't run into the risk of overcrowding and then having small carrots at the end of the day. Exactly. Yeah. It's it's a win-win. I yeah. love seed tape. Okay, I've been watching a lot of Game of Thrones lately. Nice. <laughs> no, there's no gardens. Actually, there is gardens in Game of Thrones, but nobody actively gardens and it's really sad. No, everybody just walks through them plotting to kill other people. Yeah, but there's uh, a carrot. They're all hate gardens. <laughs> Throwback to a previous episode. Anyway. Know, but there's a little finger carrot. <laughs> I was I wondering where you were going with that, but I'm like, okay, I'm going to... I don't know. I think like, obviously I'm sure they probably chose the name because it's small and it looks like a finger, but probably like probably more this than can you imagine if we had, um, it, it turns out and it's got a little goatee <laughs> and it speaks like this. I'm not, Hello, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to lie though. If shows did stuff like that, where they're like, get the little finger carrot and get like the, the Aria apple or, <laughs> Or it, <laughs> mountain carrot Why or not? something. I feel like I would absolutely buy into it. Okay, so yes. I'm, wow, could we like out-nerd ourselves anymore? <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> years ago, um, I was playing a D&D &D campaign. Somebody came out with the cookbook of that world. That's cool. So when you were reading about it and you wrote, or you, you, you read about like uh, whatever, whatever meal they were eating, um, everything from um, like the, the, the ration packs that they would have and wow. stuff like And somebody came out with a cookbook so you could make the meals from that world. That's and amazing. I never did it. I didn't cook at the time, but it was interesting. I would love one of those. Yeah. Yeah. It was I mean, a lot yeah. of fun. We are talking about this. You know how normally you find onions in like a bulb form? Yep. And that's usually what, that's like the, the familiar thing you find at the garden center, right? But then I was like, oh, you can get them as seeds as well. Yep. The other day I was at Superstore. They have three types of onion. Okay. Three. They've got uh, white onion, Spanish onion, and red onion, which is actually purple. But anyway, I won't get into that. <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's a big misnomer, but <laughs> we'll let that go. Now, if you go to like uh, like seed potatoes, uh, uh, onion, sorry, uh, the little onions, mm -hmm. um, way more choice. Mm -hmm. But then you go to actual seeds and that choice grows again. Yeah. Although I hate to tell you, this was also a red onion. But it's not <laughs> is red. It, is it? I don't know. What do you think? No, yeah, that's purple. <laughs> that's like a deep purple. I mean, maybe I'll give you burgundy, which yeah. might be like red and purple, but yeah. it's not red. Well, what about these? Have you ever seen, um, talking about really neat varieties, in the beet variety, normally, you know, we see the traditional yep. red thing, right? The purple, but, it's not- Sorry, the purple <laughs> thing. <laughs> I really like the red of the daikon. <laughs> okay, I, I'll get this right. Uh, touchstone gold beets. Yeah, a gold beets on. Which is cool. I've never tried a gold beet. That's so good. And this one was really fun. Look at this, it looks like a bullseye. That's, I always call it the bullseye. <laughs> I know that's not what it's called, but I, gold beets, so good. Yeah. So it's a similar flavor profile, but different enough that it's 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 worth getting. So what seeds do you have? 
I, oh, well, you only left me two. But <laughs> Thanks for that. I'm glad we're sharing. Oh, I also, I, sorry, I just picked that up off the floor. Um, I feel like you should be doing a magic trick, like pick a seat. I, yeah. Um, is this your seat? <laughs> um, I have radish. Uh, you want to know something awesome about radish? What? They grow amazingly well in a pot. Oh, oh yeah. okay. A number of people ask about, well, what can I grow in a pot? They have limited space or balcony or uh, maybe limited maneuverability. They can't get around a garden. Uh, maybe they don't need to grow a full garden or they want flowers, whatever the case mm -hmm. might be. People are always looking for different ways to grow. And a number of years ago, uh, I did a test and I think I did, I think it was about 20, maybe, maybe 15, 20 might be pushing it in about a 12 inch pot. Amazing. Oh my god! Amazing. I just had them on my balcony. Uh, and I they, love that. It's so accessible. Yeah, they did. Uh, they did so good. Two, two years ago, uh, Harry and I were doing the garden. I know I've told you this story, but I'll, I'll share it with everybody because it throws Harry under the bus is the main <laughs> part. No. <laughs> um, so I was doing uh, some of like the bigger and the heavier and the nastier jobs. All he had to do was plant the seeds. Okay. So really not labor intensive. Anywho, he wasn't in the mood to do it properly and he massively overplanted. Oh, no. Um, yeah, basically just kind of trenched an area out and poured seeds in it. Mm -hmm. uh, and they started coming up as they do and they were not successful. I, I pulled out the radishes and they were they were misformed. They hadn't grown properly because they're all fighting for nutrients and everything. Yeah. It was it was not good. And he felt really bad, um, as he should. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Gardening's accessible. Yeah. No, uh, he, he did feel really bad. And I was like, don't worry about it. Uh, and he was like, well, what are we going to do? And I'm like, it's no big deal. Um, I was like, we have two choices. We can rip them all out and we can start again. There's enough, there's enough time. Radish are, are relatively fast growing. I was like, oh, we can leave them. I've never seen a radish mm -hmm. flower. And he was like, really? And I was like, why not? Yeah. So we let everything go to flower that year. Um... The carrots didn't make it to flower, unfortunately. Um, but radish flowers, they're beautiful. Oh, really? What do they look yeah. like? Uh, very small. So, and tall, tall. Like I'm, I'm talking uh, three, three and a half foot tall. Wow. Pollinators went like <laughs> ape for them. They were, it was, you, could, you couldn't go out into that area of, of the yard uh, without seeing bees and butterflies everywhere. Mm -hmm. It was wild. It was so much fun. Um, and then the, the little, so it's, it's a long branch and tons of tiny little florets all over it. Uh, and they're pink and white, at least our variety Cute. Uh, was pink and white. Um, this is actually really cool. Like, yeah. and I, I took some pictures and I, I shared some pictures with friends and like the vast majority of us, nobody had seen a radish flower. Never. I've never seen one. Cause you, you don't plant radishes for the flower. You That's not your goal. I think like the only thing I've really seen gone to flower is like cauliflower flower, mm -hmm. which is really cool. Broccoli. Have you broccoli? Seen broccoli? Yeah. I've seen a broccoli flower. Um, like, uh, you know, seen mint go to flower, uh, which I know we'll talk about in yep. a future episode. Um, but yeah, I, I like the idea of growing some for vegetable and some for flowers and you sort of benefit the whole ecosystem. I was, yeah, I, like it, it, it kind of changed my lens. Yeah. Let's go briefly into just because it's sort of how we went through things last episode. Let's kind of go into some companion planting options. Do any of these like the pepper like to be on their own? Do you want to put these with anybody? It doesn't matter because they grow underground. Uh, most root vegetables are good on their own. Good. Um, they like to have their clean rows. Uh, you don't need to worry about um, pollination. Okay. Um, so you're not trying to bring in a pollinator. Mix up your onions, your leeks, your garlic. Keep yeah. away any uh, root maggots maybe. But mm -hmm. even then, the, the I've, I've never, ever once companion planted my root vegetables. Normally, I just do my root vegetables in a row. So it'll be uh, radish, parsnip, carrot beets and they do amazing i love that yeah. i love when things are easy <laughs> except i didn't say it like this because i don't want people to think that i'm a total weirdo but normally i try and do my rows alphabetically oh. like i'm like arugula and then lettuce and then spinach <laughs> i just like things a little ordered <laughs> so how do we grow these things do they need full sun what do they need i've never okay i've never done more than two crops of radish in a year i think if you were doing succession planting you could get three Ooh. Okay. 
Um, I've done two because normally I get enough radish. They keep really good. They happen pretty fast. I start my other ones normally when I'm ready to harvest those. A lot of times I've got limited space. Mm -hmm. So I wait until I've got space and then I put in the, the next one. They uh, they grow relatively fast. You know, I've um, never done that. I've never like I've only I've done a one and done, but I've never grown again in yeah. the same season. And I like why why haven't I done that? Because especially so. This I'm going to talk about that really quick, and and maybe we can look into that uh, at a different episode. Calgary's a weird city. I don't know whether it's uh, the weather or or whatnot. Um, and it's not a knock. Obviously, Calgary's my home, but. I have never lived anywhere where people genuinely think planting season hits a hard stop at the end of July. Yeah. Like the amount of times I've talked to people uh, and they're like, well, I'd love to put in a raspberry bush, but planting season is over this year. And you're like, it's July 18th. <laughs> yeah. Cause like technically you would have probably a few more months. Hey, I've planted trees in November. Yeah. Like it's so Maybe that has something to do with it here yeah. because I know a lot of people who do it in Montreal. Mm -hmm. Okay. A, a ton of people who did it. Um, the other one can also be if you don't have enough seeds, we've seen how much our seeds diminish. Mm -hmm. So we have full complement of seeds, everything that you can find right now. Yeah, some sell out and we try and replenish. Um, but you're going to find your best variety of seeds now. Come July, you don't find too many. Now, again, that's supply and demand. They, they have the seeds but nobody's asking for them. Yeah. So we're not going to bring them in if we're not selling them, mm -hmm. but if we don't have them, people can't buy them. So it's, it's a, it's a weird, it's a weird cycle, but, yeah. uh, and then you're, you're not going to find uh, any pre-grown plants at that time. True. Yeah. So you, that, that could have a lot to do with it, but the, the vast majority of us, there's too many seeds in one pack to do one planting. Yeah. Like I think in this one, in the radish, it says 200 seeds. There you go. So you could get 200 radishes. Yep. So you, you do a hundred and then you do another hundred or you, you know, 75, 75, 50. Look at me blasting out the math. Look 50. You. Yeah. 50, 65, 10. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but well, yeah, there you go. Do 10 in the pot. See? Yeah. Um, but a lot of, a lot of these are relatively cold hardy. Okay. Oh. A lot of these are like, I no, you, you can't be planting them uh, when you're at risk of heavy frost or uh, have you ever done that where you're so excited to get in the garden? You're like, I'm going to go work in my garden. It's all thawed. And you start working and the top two layers are melted and it's ice beneath that because it, and yes. you're like, oh, I, I'll just go back inside now. Will I? <laughs> or, or the part that's in full sun, you're turning the soil and then you get to the shade and it's like frozen solid. Oh my gosh, all yeah. the time. Yeah. So uh, I think I think that can be uh, a barrier to some people, but yeah. you can you, if if your area is ready to go, uh, where you might get a, a very light frost, but the seed hasn't even come up yet. There's no risk of a hard frost. Get them mm -hmm. in, get them started. And and like even on the tail end of the season, they can go for a lot longer than yep. some of the other veggies. Yeah, and the you you can look at covering them if you're worried about a frost. Yep. Uh, you don't want to obviously get a snow on them. Um, but you can start them indoors for sure. Uh, and then getting them outdoors, uh, again, always follow um, the the instructions because some of them will actually do okay in the shade. I, I do mine in, uh, in full sun, but I, I do know some people, uh, not, not heavy shade. It's not going to take the same shade as um, some of your leafy greens uh, at all. Um, but if you're, if you're kind of on that cusp where it's not eight plus hours, but you're like six to eight hours, mm -hmm. I know some people that have said they've had, they've had good luck. It's, it's sheltered. It stays warm. Yeah. Um, and it gets a good amount of sun. Go for it. Um, kind of with last week when we were talking about inoculant and some specialty kinds of things that you'll need to do. Do you foresee anything that you need to do for these, like pre-soaking or like these are just super easy? They hey? are. They are. Re they're hardy. Yeah. They're tough. Like they're tough veg. They look like root vegetables. So your other vegetables, they're all dainty and they want to be in a salad. And they're like, oh, look at me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, your root vegetables always are like the farmer. Like, hey there, fella. Uh, <laughs> yes, I absolutely give all of my plants voices. I give everything voices. But they always look hardier. Yeah, they do. Like uh, you eat a meal with like roasted veggies uh, or root veggies, a root vegetable soup. Yes. It feels hard. Like a, a nice light tomato and basil soup is good in the summer. Mm -hmm. 
a hearty uh, root vegetable soup is good in the winter. Oh, you know what I love right now is sheet pan dinners. Well, oh. So sheet pan dinner, like you put, you put like. You got to stop putting groceries on the table. All the I know. <laughs> Next week, show. cookies. <laughs> no, but like I, I love sheet pan dinners because a lot of these you can use in those. You just put them on a pan. You put some potatoes on. You put, you know, like a little um, chicken thigh on the other side. You just season everything and it all just goes into the oven. And then you just take it out in half an hour. And then it's just the easiest dinner. It's packed with nutrients. And I mean. Like you were, you were talking about all of the things that are packed in just like a single beat. Yeah. We always talk about growing. Um, and, you know, one of the reasons we talk about growing is variety and you can control it. But another one is how healthy it is. Yeah. There's something about um, harvesting your own veggies mm -hmm. and eating them and it just feels better. Yeah. It just that like when I eat like that, there, there are times now and the Colin of X years ago is like, you're a loser. But there's times now where I catch myself craving vegetables. Yeah. Where I'm like, oh, I need something good. Yeah. I, I have to make something proper. And that's where these come in. So they are densely packed, lots of fibers mm -hmm. in them. They make you feel fuller. So it helps. Con like one good thing about the beet with that amount of natural sugar combined with the fiber and how densely packed it is, the sugars break down slower. So it gives you more energy and it gives you a lot of fiber. So it makes you feel fuller for longer. So it actually helps control blood sugar and cravings. So, so far, there's been a lot of positives for yep. root vegetables. And can you grow all of these in pots? No. I've, I, I don't know. I've never done it. No. I've never done it uh, because the problem is with some of them, as far as I understand, uh, and don't hold me to this, uh, when they're in a pot, uh, the pot can get too hot, right? Mm -hmm. And they're basically not able to grow. Like, they're growing underground. So, on a hot day, you dig uh, six inches underground. That ground is cool. Yeah. Okay. You go six inches into a black pot, but soil is hot. Yeah. It's warm. It's humid. Our pots aren't always really good for drainage. Mm -hmm. And they absolutely need good drainage. They cannot be in any kind of standing water. Um, that's the number one thing about the soil. So you put them in a pot and your drain holes start getting clogged or something ends up happening. Uh, and now that soil is really hot uh, and really moist, you're, you're inviting in pathogens, you're inviting in problems. Mm -hmm. So you really want to make sure that you're, you're allowing your soil to dry out and you're allowing a little bit of coolness. You're not just basically cooking them in that pot. Okay. So probably best bet is going to be the garden bed. And much like we were talking about with tomatoes and peppers, you want a nice nutritious yep. soil that you're... So, so would you recommend sort of the same thing? So compost... Be careful making it too nutritious. Mm. Uh, you want it well drained is more important than nutritious. Okay. So you don't want a heavy clay um, and you don't want it too rich. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't want it um, filled with compost and peat moss like you would do for your tomatoes and peppers because it has to be able to hold the vegetable. Oh, right. So you don't want it too loose. Mm -hmm. right? You don't want a loose soil for all the uh, fibrous roots because these are basically all tuberous roots. Yeah. So you really, really want it to... Um, not be heavy because I just said it needs to be well-drained, um, but you don't want it uh, super rich, super mixed where you're picking it up and it's just sifting through your hand. You want to find that nice mix where it's a healthy, good garden soil. Mm -hmm. But just, just so people are aware, you can do them in raised planters. Okay. I'm okay. not talking about a lifted planter like a veggie pod. I'm sure you could because veggie pods are big enough. You plant away from the sides. That soil is going to stay pretty cool. But I'm talking about like uh, six inches up. Okay. Those kind of raised yeah. planters where there's still earth beneath it, you absolutely can go into uh, that. That'll be more than fine. Um, I've just, I've never done it in a pot. And it's just every time I've thought about it, because obviously it's something I, I, I'm not afraid to try new things. I'm mm -hmm. always like, I just don't see it working. Because the thing is, you don't have to worry about the radish. You know, we've got radishes. But, I you know, if you them. just, oops, positive potato fell out. But if you just compare the depth. Yeah. And you consider how much of that is already being cut off. That's why I think uh, radishes will do. Now, now that being said, maybe little finger carrot, <laughs> maybe Peter Baelish oh, maybe, carrot. Maybe like, yeah, maybe look yeah. at those more dwarf maybe varieties. Maybe this carrot will grow in a pot. You know, oh my gosh. <laughs> I think I did actually see, um, I think I did actually see like, like on some seed packs, you can see great for containers. What is that? We didn't talk about oh, that. Oh, no, I forgot. Because 
How did I do? <laughs> oh, because we picked up the radish. Then we talked about seed coating and how small the seeds I'm were. Like you're hiding a seed that we haven't even discussed. So I yet. have. I, uh, okay, I'm gonna. I'm, for people uh, who are listening, I'm hiding uh, the name uh, right now, and I'm just gonna show it to the camera, and then I'm gonna ask Brandy uh, what it looks like. Oh, uh, it looks like this. Yep. It is not a parsnip. It is not a parsnip. I have never grown this before. I thought it was a parsnip too. Uh, yeah. I genuinely did. When when I looked I mean, at that. It looks so similar. Yeah. It is parsley Hamburg rooted. So it's a member of the parsley family. Parsley and parsnip are not related. Uh, parsley is a herb. We're talking about herbs uh, at a later date. That's right. Yeah. And apparently this was a very uh, common vegetable uh, hundred years or so ago, and it fell out of favor, but it's making a comeback. You can actually use uh, the leaves as parsley. So you can use the entire vegetable. Yep. So you can cut the uh, leaves and they become your herb as mm -hmm. either a garnish or a flavor. Uh, and then uh, you've got the root uh, and it does have, apparently, I've never grown this, never, never, again, I've never even seen it. And apparently it's making a comeback. So that is brand new. Well, for me, I mean, it's not brand new. I literally said they had it 100 years ago. Never seen it before. That's cool. I thought it was a type of parsnip. I like that. I really did. Um, so let's move on to some structures because last week we talked about things like netting and cages. I don't imagine you would need anything for these. Uh, you got to keep the bunny rabbits off them. Really? Yeah. They love the skunks. Even squirrels? Uh, squirrels will dig them up. Absolutely. Oh my goodness. Yeah. But uh, squirrels will dig them up partially to be vandal, but partially to eat them. A squirrel will absolutely, uh, dig into them. They, they are, I, I mean, there's a reason why the picture of the rabbit is him eating a carrot. You know, if you Google image rabbit, cartoon rabbit, I'm, I'm willing to bet 70% of them, he's got a carrot in his mouth. And I mean, at the greens look pretty appetizing too. Do you know, I probably shouldn't say this. Never mind. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> now you got to say it. So I had some carrots and I they had all had this green stuff on top. And so I put it outside because I was like, there we have a neighborhood bunny. And I was like, oh, I can feed the bunny and give him the bunny. But what if it killed the bunny? <laughs> it wouldn't kill the okay, bunny good. at all. Uh, <laughs> unless you were like spraying it with Roundup before you put it. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, I fed our neighborhood bunny some oh, carrot absolutely. tops thinking that they would like yeah, it. Yeah, uh, so... <laughs> Uh, when we were kids, we had guinea pigs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so many of uh, the table scraps went to the guinea pigs. Carrot tops uh, the, with the leaves on them. <laughs> any any of those mammals will absolutely uh, dig up your root vegetables. Mm -hmm. Some will dig them up uh, and just kind of be like, oh, I'm not interested. Pests like aphids and whatnot, they're opportunistic. Mm. Uh, now, I'm not saying they won't go for carrots, but if there's tomatoes right there, they're probably going to go for the tomatoes. Oh, okay. Right? I genuinely cannot think of a time where I have had to uh, treat my root, uh, root vegetables for any kind of like aphid or spider mite. And do we have to be worried about um, like disease? The problem with root vegetables is that you don't know there's a problem till you lift them. What? Yep. So I, I, Okay, so that's the downside here yeah. of root vegetables is that if there is a problem, it's under the soil. And I was, I was fairly certain when I saw the radishes uh, coming up, um, I was fairly certain they were planted too close. I was like, that, like you know me, I, I'm willing to push boundaries, but yeah. I was like, oh, they are like, they're coming up a centimeter apart. Okay. And I was like, let's see what happens. I'm not going to thin them out. I'm kind of curious. Uh, didn't develop at all. However, I have also planted correctly. Everything looks like it's happening, right? And I, I, I know I'm not alone with this. And you go to pull out the carrot and it's tiny. Yeah. It's underdeveloped. Or uh, you dig something up uh, and it's got scab. What's on scab? It. Okay, so scab is actually a bacterial disease. Okay. And um, it's predominant in potatoes. Um, but it can spread to your other root vegetables. All root vegetables, beets, parsnips, carrots. Um, it doesn't actually uh, stop the development uh, of the of the uh, root vegetable, okay. but the vegetable is covered in lesions, like basically in scabs. Oh my. So you have to dig them out and cut them off, and it's extremely unappetizing. 
if that is in your soil, it is very hard to get rid of. Oh, no. So this yeah. could impact like future growing. Yeah. So uh, a lot of times uh, they'll tell you to uh, not do any root vegetables in that soil for three to five years. What? That yeah. long? But that's that's why we talked about. And again, we talked about space and limitations. But that's one of the reasons why we talk about crop rotations. Oh, OK. So if you can yeah. do crop rotation, then that might be. And then the other one is because this has been uh, such a problem for like eons. Uh, they have developed um, scab-resistant potatoes. Mm -hmm. So they can actually fight the bacteria. It, it is a bacteria, so there's not much you can do, but there are ways to lessen it. So uh, lighter soils, uh, incorrect watering, incorrect irrigation, so it's not draining properly, that can add to it. Um, so you really want to keep an eye on that because if it does come in, uh, yeah, you have a problem. Last week when we were talking um, about like soil activators and whatnot and they're bacteria, mm -hmm. but they are a good bacteria. It's what I tell, you know, back in the day, they used to be soil sterilizers. What? Now, I don't know what was in them. I have no idea. I never used one. Mm -hmm. Just so you know, I, I've never used a soil sterilant. We still to this day get asked about it. And basically it would kill absolutely everything in your soil. But the problem is what they started realizing is, one, how devastating that is for the ecosystem. Yeah. But then the other thing, so if you take any area of land, uh, and this is, this is in nature, and it's designed this way for a reason, but our yards aren't nature. We, we, we're, we're tweaking them. We're, we're, we're changing the balance. You take any natural area and uh, you uh, devastate it, clear cut it, uh, natural forest fire, whatever, landslide. And you now have just bare earth, healthy, regular earth, but it's bare earth. What is the first thing you see growing? Weeds. Yeah. Weeds. But the reason they grow is because they actually start replenishing the soil and they start stabilizing the soil with their roots. They start holding the soil in place so that the more complex uh, and bigger plants can start coming in. Um, so if you're in a forest, the weeds come in. Uh, and then the trees start coming in. Then as the trees get bigger, they form a canopy. Now the weeds can't get the shade. They start dying back. Mm -hmm. And that's where we find the balance. So there, there is actually a, a progression there. Um, but we don't have that. So people were sterilizing their soils. Uh, nothing was growing properly because there was no healthy bacteria or anything good happening. And then all of the bad stuff came back first. They'd be like, well, I don't understand this. I'm going to sterilize it again. To even recognizing that there are beneficial bugs. Yep. That's huge, right? Well, a few a few years ago, could you imagine 10 years ago, uh, you're uh, at the cash and somebody's like, I've got aphids. And you're like, yeah, you need more bugs. They'd look at you like your head was on backwards. Mm -hmm. They'd be like, what are well, you talking yeah, about? Yeah, when I first started here, back when I was a teenager, the common thing was always chemical controls, right? Mm -hmm. And now, I mean, predator bugs, like you said, was never even a thought. Nope. Biological agents are significant. Fight nature with nature. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I, one thing I want to talk about with weeds, and this is, again, really common in root vegetables, uh, and it's happened to me uh, 100%. That's why I tell these stories. Again, I, I, never, I don't ever want to come across like, I'm perfect. I've never made this mistake, but you might make it. I've absolutely done this. So gone out, prepped my yard, planted my root vegetables. Life gets busy in the spring, so they're, they're watered. They, they get what they need. Uh, and then I go out and, oops, I missed a week, missed a couple of weeks. Now I go out to weed. And I'm not 100% sure what's a weed and what's a veggie. Oh, no. And now the weeds are competing for the nutrients that my root vegetables need. And they're crowding out. But what if I pull the wrong one? So what do you do? Have you ever seen uh, people do uh, little mounds of soil and they plant in the mounds of soil? Oh, I have never seen that. Okay, so you do a little mound, like a couple of inches high, yeah. um, kind of think like a little hill, and you run the hill and you, you pack it down, you firm it down like a sandcastle, and you plant in that. Anything that comes in that, wait until it starts fully developing before mm -hmm. you pull it. Wait until you can identify it. Anything that grows in the area that you walk on, get rid of immediately. Cool. Or if you don't have the time to do that, uh, it's not something you're keen on, run string. Yeah. Run a string down where you planted your veggies. Mm -hmm. Because here's the thing. At the end of every row, you put in a little marker that says uh, carrots, uh, parsnips. Okay, great. I know that whole row is carrots, but what's a carrot and what's a weed? Yeah. They're all coming up. They look alike. Everything is small. Yeah, got I'm little not... dicotyledons going yeah. on. Exactly. And you're, you're, you're like, I'll pull this one. That was a carrot. 
That's like um that's like you like uh, diffusing a bomb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. <a, laughs> do, do I take the two leaf or the three leaf? I think there's an Instagram reel yeah. on the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wiping the sweat off your brow. You're on the radio. Okay, Colin, listen to me. I'm gonna walk you through this. <laughs> um so you can do that, but if you if you plant in a row, run a string down the row. And then do the same thing with the mount. Anywhere that's under the string, just leave until you can identify. Okay. What I always tell people, if push comes to shove, uh, weed uh, after you identify. You can, uh, there will always be time to pull a weed. It's very hard to replant something that's germinated and being growing for a month. And you're like, yeah, that's a weed, yoink. <laughs> it was a person. <sighs> yeah. And I've, I've absolutely done it. It's yeah. absolutely happened to me. Uh, you know, I keep my garden relatively weed free. I, I allow some weeds. I, I'm not, I'm not one of those. It doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, my attitude has definitely changed over the years, but with my root vegetables, you absolutely, until they're fully established, their leaves are big. They're really getting all the sun and you can go out and weed as normal. It's a good idea to stay on top of it. Let's go into some general care instructions, just in case they differ from different types of fruits and vegetables that you're growing. Um, if we're talking about fertilizer, I'm assuming you can just use an all-purpose fertilizer or a vegetable specific. What are your thoughts? Go real light on that. Oh, okay. That's go a good Go real tip. light on fertilizer uh, and, and really, really, really uh, make sure you read the fertilizer. And, and I mean, this sounds so common and I never want to come across like, what, you didn't think of this? Because people don't. But it's a root vegetable, okay? So what you're eating is the root of the plant. Yeah. What is the uptake of all nutrients of a plant? It In is the, the root. root. You do not want a heavy fertilizer. Mm. You do not want... I know a lot of people um, will not actually fertilize the root veggies. What they will do is when they're preparing the soil, they'll put in a granular time release. Oh. They'll put in a gran... Uh, so it, they don't want to use a water soluble. Yeah. Uh, because there's too much uptake. Mm -hmm. There's too much uptake of fertilizers. Now you're using an organic fertilizer. Uh, you're not fertilizing heavy and you're not fertilizing X amount of time before harvest. The plant is using those nutrients. They're not just sitting there. Um, but just be very aware. I do not fertilize my root vegetables. Like I fertilize my tomatoes and like, a, and mm -hmm. I get it as well. Tomatoes are a lot of water, uptake of moisture. That's what's filling the tomato but it's not the direct uptake. Mm -hmm. So by the time uh, any kind of fertilizer, any kind of MPK gets anywhere close to my tomatoes, it has gone through the roots. It's gone through uh, all of like the stem and the, the trunk of the plant. It's gone through the leaves. Then it's getting to the fruit. It's not quite the same. Mm -hmm. So really just keep an eye on your fertilizer mm -hmm. uh, for that. And you don't want to over fertilize either um, that some people swear that that is uh, going to help scab. I've never seen anything definitive. Have you ever read any uh, garden law from back in the day, like a uh, uh, hundred years ago, two hundred years ago? Like a little bit, but there are there are some great ones. There's like uh, so if you want your iris to grow best, so iris grow from like a comb, from a, like a tuber. Right. So that big uh, brown thing you see on the on the surface, that's kind of their main root, and then they put little roots off that. So people say that should always face south. Yeah, it, it makes not a blind bit of difference because it's not photosynthesizing. The leaf <laughs> comes up, the leaf will face south, you're good. But people go, no, that has to face south. And I believe it's iris. There's a myth that if you really want your iris to do good, they should be planted at midnight by a naked young man. No, you're joking. You've got the computer. What? You've got <laughs> no, a hundred percent. No, Google Google iris planting naked young man. I don't want to look I in your. Not, that is not <laughs> safe for work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't even think like, yeah, you're going to put that into Google. <laughs> you know? How about garden lore is a good... Um... Garden lore, Iris. And people have heard this and they go, well, no, that's how you do it. That's And and here's the thing. You plant that corn facing south. Well, of course it's going to do good. Okay, if it's in a full sun location, it's facing south. The leaf comes up, the iris does good. You're like, well, that's the reason. You're like, not really. Yeah. Plant that corn too deep facing south. Your iris isn't going to do too good. Like... So there's a number of uh, of fun things that uh, that you can look at when it comes to planting veggies yeah. and plants like that. You know what I never found? I never found a root fruit. No, no, there are all... there no fruits that nope. grow underground. It's just all kind of veggies. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, there's no uh, – so the – oh, I can't remember the exact classifications now. But it's something like uh, – and I'm talking very general because it's all different. Like strawberry technically isn't a fruit. It's something else. And uh, oh, the I watermelon know. is a berry. Yeah. Right? Like I'm not going to get into all of those weird classifications. But it's something like uh, – a vegetable is when you eat at the stem or the root of the plant that is actually growing. A fruit is something that comes from a pollinated flower ah, on the plant. Okay. Now, again, I'm not going to, because I know cucumber and people go, well, what about this? Uh, I know, there's so many gray yeah. areas. And I'm just going to talk very, very generally. Yeah. So uh, the reason, bro so broccoli flowers, radish flowers, yeah. but you don't eat the flowers. That's right. When the flowers are pollinated, you don't eat those seeds. You're eating the actual, so if nobody's seen that before, the flower of a broccoli actually comes out the broccoli head. It's very it's, alien it's looking. It's really cool. I yeah. wonder if I can just quickly the, bring the it The yellow up. flowers that come out, It's I let one go to flower because I'd never seen it before. And it was really, I was actually the same year when I did the radish because I got inspired. Do you know, mine, mine went to flower in my fridge. No, it didn't. Really? <laughs> well, I forgot I had a broccoli in there. And it went to, yeah, there you go. Yeah, look. Yep. Yeah, it's just like little little tiny flowers. Yep. It's super and I, cute. I ate them and they're uh, gross. Oh. <laughs> they're extremely bitter with no proper flavor. Of course you would yep. eat it, you nerd. <laughs> well, you you've gotta you've gotta find out about it. <laughs> um, but all of the all of the the good stuff that makes the flavor has now got into forming a flower. Yeah. That's I, I, we'll talk about this with herbs, but that's why you can't let your herbs go to flower. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh absolutely let them go to flower if you want to enjoy the flower, of yeah. course. But don't think it can go to flower and then you can eat it. So yeah. the vegetable is actually the uh, like the formation of the plant is a vegetable. A fruit is a pollinated flower. Mm -hmm. And that's how, so rhubarb is a vegetable. Oh, yeah, it would be. Yeah, rhubarb is a vegetable, not Which a fruit. Which is so funny because I bet you growing up, you were probably thinking it was a fruit because well, of course, it's used in like desserts and exactly, stuff. Exactly, it's sweet. Yeah, it's sweet. It's sweet. And yeah, tomato is a fruit, but it's a vegetable. It's a, so again, we're not going to go into the guy. You, no. you call rhubarb a fruit. Nobody is going to be like, oh, well, well, actually, no, there will be people out there who are, you can't say anything. No, you can't say anything. Yeah, just, you have to know your own truth. Yeah. Just, yeah. Do not go on social media and make any claims ever. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. <laughs> no claims on social media anymore. But um, yeah, that's that. So you wouldn't find a, uh, a, 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 a fruit uh, root vegetable, a fruit, fruit root vegetable. I know. It's fruit really root. fun to say fruit yeah. root. <laughs> okay. Quickly pick your favorite vegetable out of this bowl. Oh no, after everything we've talked about today, oh, this is really on. hard. Yeah, like that. My favorite would be, oh, we missed one. Which which one did we not talk about? Oh, Do you know what this is? Turnip? Uh, Rutabaga? Yes. Yeah, yes. same potato, potato. Yeah, it says a purple topped turnip. I do. I've never had one of these before. Oh, okay. Do you, best way to prepare them is uh, peel it, mm -hmm. uh, chop off the top, chop off the bottom. Yeah. Okay, then cut it into about one inch squares and then throw the whole thing in the compost because it's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is your least I, favorite. I do not like turnip. No. <laughs> um, okay, fun thing. You can Google this too. Yeah. So in England, we uh, didn't have pumpkins when I was growing up. Oh my so gosh. this is what we used to carve jack-o'-lanterns out of. Oh, here we go. Here we go. And we uh, literally, <laughs> yeah, that's, there you go. Oh my so goodness. So you put a string through Are it you and me? you would actually, so, so you'd take your turnip, you'd cut the top off. I never did it because it was too hard. My dad used to do it. Yeah. And you would cut the top off uh, and then you would dig it out. Any idea how hard it is to dig this out? God love my dad for the stuff he did for us. Then you cut your weird little face. Then you run a string through it because it's so heavy and you'd carry it around. And that's what you would hold up for Halloween. That's you'd hold just, up your creepy turnip. That's just wild. Yeah. Like, like, look at that. Yep. Hey. Creepy turnip. And really cool. they look creepier than a pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> like pumpkins look friendly. Pumpkins are like, I'm fat and sassy. Look at me. I'm orange. Turnips are like, I'm sickly white. <laughs> purple and you've carved triangles into my eyes <laughs> <laughs> they're so cool yeah. no but i mean there's so much to love about root vegetables so, i would have to say my favorite's radish i i that's really okay so or or carrots oh it's hard again my my favorite is the beet yeah my favorite is the beet but i adore radishes uh, and i love parsnips and actually i don't i don't use it enough because we eat what creatures of habit right yeah so I never think to buy daikon, but whenever I have it, I love it. I, I think, well, I bought it now. I'm going to yeah. have to use it. So <laughs> it's 
so good in, um, I know some people cook it and prepare it, uh, like to do with kohlrabi. Actually, I'm not a fan of it that way. I like it uh, fresh. Okay. I like it uh, just just uh, cleaned, peeled, take the skin off it. And maybe some people eat the skin. I, I haven't. I, I don't know. Um, and then uh, chop it up kind of like you would a cucumber, cut it into cubes, whatever, and eat it. In order... Coming in third is the parsnip, followed by the radish. Yeah. And then the beet takes gold. Yeah. The, I, I must it's a gold admit. beet. <laughs> gold beets by Dre. That's really cool. Dr. I Dr. Dre should have a beet farm. <laughs> I think he does. Does he? Does oh, my God. I think I he does. Hold I said on. that years ago, and nobody found it funny. And Hold if on. he did it, Dr. I want a Dre. consulting fee, Dr. Dre. <laughs> beet farm. I'll take 8% of royalties off one song. Oh, maybe. Hold on. Beats by Farmer Dre. I don't know. Somebody looked this up and said it to us in our inbox because we need to know if Dr. Dre has a beat farm because that's brilliant. Yeah. Beats by (laughs) Dre. How many people would buy that? Yeah. Like, absolutely. Harry would be like, oh, well, we need beats now. Oh, totally. Absolutely. Well, it's like what we're talking about the Game of Thrones, right? The Game of Thrones came out with seeds out. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Beats by Dre. (laughs) Beats by Dre. Yeah. Well, that was really fun. Iceberg Lattice by Ice Cube. (laughs) Oh gosh, the rapper's garden. The, when you ever when we were talking about themed gardens? Yeah. Oh my goodness. And then you could name the whole garden after Coolio and call it Gangster's Paradise. <laughs> so, oh my god. Look at all of this, yeah. this inspiration we're spewing. Exactly. But that was really fun. Um we're going to throw all of this up onto our blog, our show notes over at goldenacre.ca/blog. You can go and check out all of these seeds that we were talking about today, get some inspiration for your own garden. Um, I mean, it's getting to that time where we're going to start seed starting. So um, if anything inspired you today, get on it. Yeah. Um, and if you are uh, interested in going on Spotify and answering our questions and our polls, we have those up. We'd love to hear from you. Info at goldenacre.ca. And you can just put po- somewhere on the subject line, just put podcast so that we see it. We're available on Instagram, Facebook. We're on YouTube now. That's we're doing right. a yeah. video podcast and we're really excited. We're about everywhere. that we're everywhere yeah and next week we're actually going to be talking all about leafy greens and herbs um, that's that's my favorite yeah oh I'm yeah really, yeah I, they're easy to grow they're fast to grow you can grow them year round uh, and you've got a really good chance of success so they're great great way to introduce people uh, to gardening and they taste delicious you mm-hmm. can put them in salads and pastas and soups you can make tea so many good things I love that you can do it inside and outside yeah. too yeah, right. so many good things. Like, yeah, it's not like, oh, start them indoors. It's like, no, grow them to completion Put indoors. Them in your kitchen. Yeah. It's amazing. I love it. Well, we'll talk more about that next weekend. Okay, goodbye, everyone. <laughs>